Well, Russia's finance ministry says it's preparing to service some of its foreign currency debt with payments to be made in rubles if sanctions prevent banks from honoring debts in the currency of issue. Russian officials say that's not a debt default. This comes as Western sanctions continue to hit Russia. My colleague Juliet Mann asked Konstantin Sonin, the Russian economist with the University of Chicago, whether the Russian government has underestimated the impact of global sanctions. Oh, I think uh, the Russian government badly miscalculated what is going to happen when Russia invades Ukraine, and this is basically the same miscalculation that led President Putin to believe that uh, his uh, army will be greeted as liberty. He counted on the West to be weak and divided and slow with sanctions like in 2014. But Russia was economically stable when Putin started the war. He, he built up currency reserves of more than $600 billion. There will be serious financial repercussions looming, though. Right. This is one thing that, I don't know, boggles mind of any economist. Russia was so stable financially, and then it's all basically ruined, like 20 years of Putin's rule are ruined in, a, in, just, uh, in, in just one movement. So are we looking at stagnation, recession, runaway inflation? I think we are looking to a huge fall in GDP, something that is comparable to the global financial crisis 11, uh, 11 years ago that hit Russia hard and long-term conse consequences for decades. So I think the return to 2021 will take maybe two decades. It's, it's just starting at a long path in a very low starting point. So a long path, low starting point, you think it might take two decades to, to build up. But what, what about you know, Russian oil and gas? That surely gives them a bit of leverage. Okay, the thing is that Russia is much more, uh, more than oil and gas. R R Russian, Russians uh, consume a lot of products. The economy is actually quite, quite sophisticated. Oil and gas are just the major experts, and now the sophistication of the economy will go down significantly. A lot of production and consumption will be much simpler, much more primitive. So it's just going back to 90s. And a lot of things that have been built since 90s, all these new business coming, new institutions, new uh, Russian businesses, this is all destroyed. So this is a path, a path to repeat uh, now. You, you mentioned um, sophisticated culture, business. Um, this conflict was not what people in those parts of Russia had expected, and it's led to scores leaving Russia. I, I, I believe you were meant to be in Russia, but of course, right now you're in Chicago. So, what are the implications of this brain drain for the country? Okay, one thing that, of course, there is nothing good in in that now. By now, two, two weeks of war. Uh, 200,000, I think, people in, I don't know, journalists, artists, but a lot of IT software developers, a lot of small and medium businessmen, a lot of mid-level executives, they all left Russia. And this is, of course, it's a sort of a huge blow to Russia's human capital. But at the same time, do not overestimate this effect. I mean, the, the effect of war, the effect of the putting the country on the war footing, the effect of harsh political repressions that we're seeing in Russia right now, the effect of sanctions and the, the withdrawal of foreign business, these are all larger effects than just the brain drain.